<clears throat> so if you saw the movie Amadeus, it's one of my favorite movies. F. Marie Abraham got the Academy Award. There's the most wonderful scene. There are many wonderful scenes. Spoiler alert. So if you haven't, you can just turn me off if you want. But hopefully you've seen it. And Mozart's wife comes over to try to solicit Salieri for his help in getting his works pub published and just being a professional success. And she brings along Mozart's um, scores that are quite private. And Mozart would have been appalled if he'd known she brought them, but Salieri really wants to see them. So he plies her with some uh, liquor filled chocolate bonbons, which loosens her up quite a bit. And so finally she just hands over a whole brochure of Mozart's scores and Salieri is most hungry to see them. God only knows what sort of advantage he can take by reading them or stealing them or selling them or God only knows what, but he opens them up and he's with his musical mind, which is really quite, which is extremely adept. It's not at Mozart level, but he can instantly read the scores and he can hear the music in his head. And in the movie, he's playing the music in his head that he's reading and he's, he's floored by something that he sees. There are no corrections. There are no mistakes. There's no rewrites. And he says, it was music as if it had never, could, has never been written. It's as if he was taking dictation from God. And that line has just floored me for years. I love the idea of taking dictation from God and how Mozart was doing that, but how we all could and how we all can in so many ways that we do. And it's not about being a musician necessarily, although it certainly could be, but whether your activity is being a mom or a nuclear physicist or a bus driver or a gardener or anything else, the ability to take dictation from God. What do I mean by that? What did Salieri mean by that? It means the pure and perfect flow of the most unimpeded, glorious goodness in and through you effortlessly, as if no mistakes needed to be made, as if there was no struggle, as if there was no effort involved. Now, of course, this is an earned skill in most cases, although it is said that Mozart, you know, crawled up to the piano when he was 18 months old and started plinking on it. But, you know, whether you have to put in your 10,000 hours, you know, like the Beatles, the Beatles put in 10,000 hours in Hamburg, Germany, and all around Europe in 1960, 61, 62, they put in those hours. And then, you know, for the rest of their career, they were taking dictation from God. They, they seem to be so wonderfully gifted and inspired by what they do. Now, the difference for us meditators and the key in meditation in this whole theme is that we gain the one most important thing when you meditate. See, you can get good at anything. You can put in your 10,000 hours and become excellent and adept at any skill, but it's the meditation and it's the conscious contact. The, uh, it's the connection we make in meditation that brings the one essential element that makes the world take notice, and that's inspiration. When you meditate and you make this conscious contact, the inspiration moves in and through whatever skill you have. And then it's the most beautiful combination of your worldly acquired skill and it's inspired. And then the world takes notice. Now, this doesn't mean that we're world famous. It's irrelevant. A lot of people have zero interest in that, but it means your work is so good. There's no competition for it. There's no scratching and clawing against other people the effect of your work spreads out into the world in ways harmonious and beautiful and glorious. So in our meditation, we are learning how to take dictation from God. The signal flows through us and whatever, whatever it is that we're expressing is then inspired and beautiful. We'll talk about this principle all week long and congratulations on being a meditator and letting the inspiration in. I'll see you guys tomorrow.